we've got 10 staff in total. We've got a, a contracts manager who, who works off site. He does all the PAYE, GST, um, book work, budgeting, etc. And then um, I've got an operations manager who uh, prices the work and um, does most of the organising. I still do a little bit of pricing and a little bit of organising, but uh, my favourite bit's on the tool, so I, I uh, roster myself on and go and uh, yeah, muck in, lend a hand and, and get into it, uh, which is which is quite good for, for training and it's it's good good overall for everyone really. Yeah. And sort of how long have you been fencing and how did you sort of get into it? Uh, started in 2004 um, as a limited liability company. I was trading for two years as a sole trader before that. Um, in my school holidays and uni holidays I, I worked um, for an outfit in Blenheim when all the vineyards were going pretty hard out and then uh, once I finished uni I uh, yeah, ripped into it, and uh, I wasn't gonna wasn't gonna do it forever. But here we are now, and uh, uh, I'm planning on doing it for a long while yet. Yeah, and having uh, good staff in the team must be you know a good good thing. Paramount, absolutely paramount. There's, uh, uh, my granddad always used to say, you're only as good as your worst staff member, and he's dead true. So um, fortunately, I'm very blessed. Um, we've got a really good crew of guys, and they do their job well. And uh, yeah. It's it, you, you got to have the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. And sort of over the 12 years of been fencing, what sort of innovations and in technology have you seen sort of progress? Uh, we've se seen a mountain of innovations. Uh, some we've done ourselves, uh, and some have gone well. Some have uh, gone not so well. But uh, uh, yeah, it's it's a fairly mundane sort of a job, and uh, and it can be fairly physical as well. So. Uh, uh, like I said before, I'm pretty keen on doing this for a long while yet, so we've got to make it easy so I can do it when I'm 60. Um, we've seen a lot of innovations in terms of um, um, post-driving technology. Uh, that, that's changed a lot. Um, the, 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 the manufacturers of post-drivers in the last decade have certainly uh, gone out to the market and found out what, what is required out there, and there's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good innovations there with um, spiking and uh, Anything that's hard, you know, there used to be many, many manufacturers of post drivers that could whack posts into into pretty soft stuff. But uh, just the the augering and the and the spiking technology has is, is, is really really changed a lot yep. for the better. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, innovation with stapling as well. Um, Stockade or formerly Pazload of uh, uh, they've put a lot of R and D into it. Uh, it's uh, there again very mundane sort of a job so the quicker and better you can do it the quicker and easier you can do it the better really. Going to the stockade you've had quite a bit of a history you've sort of started with the the first models and now you've got the the 400 here. Yeah so uh, the, the two types of um, uh, guns that Paslo put out are uh, one for, for stapling posts like, like we've got here and uh, the, the second of course is the um, the battening guns now um, we started off with a with a battery and gas uh, 2.5 millimeter batten gun, which was uh, which was good, um, but it was uh, the staple diameter was too too narrow, and um, the staple was uh, it just didn't work very well, and they. Uh, it was a hard job for us to sell to the farmers. They liked the 315 barbed batten staple. So uh, progressed from there, we went to the 3.15 batten gun. Um, that was a, a good gun, um, but it was powered by compressor, which was uh, which was very limiting. So if you if you see the bulls at the AMP show get led around by the by the the master of the ring or whatever, well that's what you are with a with a with a compressor gun. You you're on the end of a halter, and it's it's very restrictive, and uh, and you can't uh, work efficiently or quickly with it. So it's only really just a slight step better than uh, than hammering and stapling. Um, the next best innovation was making that 3.15 millimetre batten gun into a into a gas powered gun, which I've done and done very well. So you can uh, take off the halter and the lead, and and you you're free to go, you're free to roam, which is which is excellent. Yeah. So uh, um, then, of course, I've got the uh, ST400, um, which there again started as a. Uh, uh, compressor operated tool and it, um, it's gone into being powered by gas now which there again is, um, is excellent. Yeah. So uh, yeah we, we used to take a motorbike along the line with a compressor and uh, load it all up and it 
it was really a two-man job, depending on how quickly you were going and how much hose you had out. But yeah, the, the, the ST400 eyes is an excellent tool, it really is. Yeah. Sped up your fencing times as well? Absolutely, absolutely. We were doing a line on Sunday that uh, we, we did 300 metres and oh, it was like half an hour or something stupid. It was, it was, uh, it was wonderful, it really was. It got us home earlier. Uh, what sort of advice would you give people that want to get into fencing? Uh, honesty is the best policy. Uh, go out there, um, be honest, work hard, uh, price the work like it should be. Um, you know, you might not get every job, but if you price it, you, um, price it enough so that you're still in business next year, but you're not ripping them off, and uh, and uh, you yeah, get a good reputation and uh, just chip away at it, and yeah, it'll, it'll happen. Cool.